So we already spoke about Newton's first and second laws of motion. Now let's talk about the third law of motion, which can be described using the following statement. If an object exerts a force on a second object, the second object will exert an equal but opposite force on the first object. So let's look at four very common examples, but very important examples of the third law of motion. So, Let's look at example A. Let's suppose we have a mass, a box, that is resting on a horizontal surface. Let's suppose a table. So our mass is at rest. Now even though the mass is at rest, the box, the mass, will create a force on our table. So let's call it force box on table. So it's the force that the box creates on our table. But at the same time, according to Newton's third law of motion, the table will create a force on the box that will have the same exact magnitude, but which will point in the opposite direction. So that's the force created by the table on the box. So these two forces are in opposite directions, but have equal magnitude. So what's basically taking place is if you examine our microscopic level between the surface of the box and our table, the two objects will slightly compress because of these two forces. So let's look at a more clear example. Let's suppose I take my hand, my palm, and I push down on the wall, on the whiteboard. So the wall, the whiteboard, will feel a force due to my hand. So my hand will create a force on the wall. Now at the same time, the wall, or the whiteboard in this case, will exert a force of equal magnitude, but in opposite direction. So in, uh, no matter how hard I push on my wall, my wall, my whiteboard, will push with the same exact magnitude, but in opposite direction. In fact, you could feel your hand compressing. You could feel the palm being compressed by the wall. So by the force created by the wall on my hand. Now, let's look at a third example. Let's suppose we have a rocket. How exactly does a rocket travel from the ground into outer space? A common misconception is that the engine creates a force that pushes downward, and that force that pushes downward allows our object to move upward. That's actually not true. According to Newton's third law of motion, the engine does in fact create a force on the gas molecules found in the air, but those gas molecules exert a force of equal magnitude, but in the opposite direction. So, the engine creates a force downward, but the gas molecules, according to the third law of motion, exert a force of equal magnitude but in opposite direction. And it's exactly this force and not this force that propels our rocket upward into outer space. So finally, let's examine the last example. Let's look at walking. How exactly are we able to walk? Well, we walk because of the force of friction. So let's suppose a person is walking along the road on our horizontal surface, let's call it the x-axis. So what happens is our feet create a force on the ground and this force points in this direction, so backwards. And at the same time, assuming there is friction, friction creates a force that points in the opposite direction, but with the same exact magnitude. And this comes from Newton's third law of motion. So it's not this force that allows us to move forward, but it's the force due to the ground. It's the force due to friction. So we have the, uh, the force that the person creates on the ground, and we have the force that the ground creates on the person. Now, an important note must be made. The two forces act on different objects. So what, is that, what does that mean? Well, notice that these two forces are exactly the same. They have the same exact magnitude, but point in different directions. 
So technically, one would think that because they point in different directions but have the same magnitude, if you add these forces up, the net force is zero. If the net force is zero, according to our first law of motion, the object will not move. The object will not move because the net force is zero. But this is not actually true because these two forces are acting on two different objects and that means these forces would never appear together in the sum of our equation according to the second law of motion. So we would never add these two forces up because these two forces act on completely different objects. So one force is the person acting on the ground and the second force is the ground acting on the person. So even though they have the same magnitude and they point in different directions along the same axis, these two forces are acting on completely different objects and so we should never add these forces when we're trying to find our net force.